We just lost Vanessa, looks like. Oh. Right. We'll just wait for a moment, just in case she's uh, logging on, logging in rather. Mm, Uncle Sanjeev, oh, your device is making noise. That's why I put you on mute. Mm. I guess it's due to the fan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shall we go ahead and begin then? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for joining again, our usual Wednesday evening study. And uh, today, once again, we will have Franklin uh, anchor the study. His uh, second uh, part in the series on uh, uh, remind me of the of the title, Franklin again. Uh, Sir, uh, cosmology confirms by the cosm cosmology confirms the Bible. That's correct. Yeah, cosmology confirms the Bible. So uh, uh, he is, like I said last time, a resident scientist and resident ap apologist. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Franklin, for all the hard work of research and uh, and giving us these nuggets. You know, let's uh, ask for God's loving grace with us, as He is always loving. Uh, but let's specially request His presence with us. Praveen, can you lead us in the opening prayer? Let's pray. Father, we are grateful to you for this opportunity you have given in our lives, Lord, that we could come together to have fellowship and study your word, encourage one another, Lord, and to grow in your faith and grow in the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Especially, we are going to spend some time in discussion uh, about science and your Bible and your revelation, O oh Lord. I pray your grace may be upon us. It is such a difficult subject, and but we thank you for Franklin for his hard work and uh, as he's uh, trying to present uh, that cosmology confirms Bible. I pray your grace may be upon him a lot that uh, uh, he may be able to speak your heart and we all may be able to relate to it and uh, understand and may bless your holy name, O Lord. The discussion we have, we have and the time we spend here, Lord, May be beneficial in our lives and be acceptable in your the discussion will be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Franklin. Okay, sir. Good evening to you all. Uh, I'm just delighted to be here with you all together, uh, listening to some unique presentation and then enjoying uh, debates. Hopefully, it should be an animated debate animated discussions and we enjoy viewpoints, perspectives and angles. Okay, uh, I'm especially uh, privileged and honored uh, to, to anchor the study. Uh, thanks to our pastor Dan and uh, also thanks to our pastor Praveen and Sachin and all of you for joining us today, joining me today on this study. Today we want to embark on a fascinating journey, a journey where we do a comparative study of the latest scientific discoveries and uh, the Bible, and we will see uh, what what can you what can we learn from these things. Last time uh, in my first uh, presentation, I spoke about the Big Bang theory. Uh, we were talking about the origin of the universe, and we picked up the Big Bang theory. Why did we pick up Big Bang theory? Because the Big Bang theory is the most widely accepted in the scientific community and the best explanation for the origin of the universe. Okay, uh, now let me say this. Uh, there are many theories uh, for the origin of the universe. You have, we have what is called string theory. We have uh, static or uh, static theory. And then we have oscillating theory and Big Bang theory and on and on. But we picked up Big Bang theory. And not only is it widely accepted, but now it is established firmly and solidly in the scientific findings. So what this Big Bang did was it threw the scientific community off balance. They were shaken to the very core 
and then they have to do uh, 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 they have to study the subject of origin of the universe from scratch uh, that was the implications of it what caused the uh, big bang to become so popular uh, we spoke about the discoveries and the findings during the past century we are talking about the discoveries and findings during the last 100 years they have been so earth shaking they were so staggering mind boggling it it will uh, it will affect the theological outlook of everyone including you and me and it's going to affect our world views okay what were these discoveries uh, i gave five astronomical uh, discoveries i spoke about uh, uh, edwin hubble's images uh, images about the galaxies receding further farther and farther from us then we spoke about uh, then we spoke about the general theory of relativity then we spoke about space time theorems we spoke about two space time theorem a general one and a specific one then we picked up dark energy now these are the find five discoveries or the findings that have occurred during the last 100 years now before i start i must acknowledge the source of my uh, uh, material hmm. i have prepared today's presentations courtesy to dr euros astrophysicist and an, an apologist uh, reasons to believe and grace communion international i gratefully acknowledge my sources uh, because they have immensely helped me and helped me to re have a re look at my own theological uh, foundations and my world view okay now uh, let let's look at the, the the five astronomical evidence i gave and then let's have a timeline let me run through the timeline briefly now last time i presented scientific evidence to establish the fact that the big bang is as well established and grounded as the best explanation for the origin of the universe uh, let me uh, today briefly talk about the scientific evidence and we will uh, go into today we are going to go into the biblical evidence what has the bible to say on uh, on the uh, on the universe on the or i should say what is the biblical cosmology okay here's a quick rundown of the timeline fourth century aristotle aristotle said that the universe is eternal it had no beginning then we come to the 20th century uh, the first direct scientific evidence for big bang was einstein's general uh, theory was his, his new uh, theory of gravity known as general relativity uh, general theory of relativity okay and then in 1925 there was a, a jesuit priest and astrophysicist by george lamentry he was the first man to promote the big bang creation event and then 1929 and then edwin hubble started uh, using his 100 inch telescope to view the galaxies receding farther and further and he also measured he took the velocity of galaxies result that result from a general expansion of the universe 1931 you see einstein uh, in 19 in 1916 tumbled on the on the idea that the universe is expanding and it had a beginning but for some strange region he started fudging with his own uh, mathematical equations and he and he changed it he arbitrarily introduced uh, 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 mathematical numbers to make his equations conform to the uh, to the contemporary uh, Uh, what should i say contemporary idea of the universe what was the contemporary idea the contemporary idea said the uh, the universe the universe is eternal it had no beginning so even though he, einstein tumbled upon the idea he, he started fudging with it and he changed his equations 15 years down the line in 1931 albert einstein had the had visit, visited california where hubble's telescope is there and through the 100 inch telescope he viewed for himself the galaxies receding farther and farther from us and uh, he was satisfied that he has uh, seen the evidence and uh, he he makes a very dramatic statement uh, i think this particular statement is a, is a beautiful statement he talks about professional integrity when you do your research and findings you have to be honest you have to be courageous to say admit what is the truth and speak for the truth so in 1931 einstein said 
Denying the existence of the beginning of the universe is the greatest blunder of my scientific career. I thought that was a remarkable statement. And then in 1970, space-time theorems were uh, discovered. Stephen Hawking's, Hawking and Roger Penrose uh, uh, proposed a theory uh, known as the space-time theorem. And then Hawking, Hawking won the Nobel Prize for his, uh, for his this particular paper in mathematics. And then 10 years down the line, uh, we have a more powerful theorem. And then in 1999, uh, the discovery of what is known as the dark energy. Dark energy. What is dark energy? Dark energy merely says the universe is expanding and uh, the expansion rate should be, uh, should be tuned to the exactitude. Okay, one minute, please. <clears throat> Okay, uh, that's the time. That's the uh, that's the timeline uh, I had with me. And then our present the, the the title of my presentation is cosmology confirms confirms the Bible. Okay, what is cosmology? Cosmology is a branch of astronomy. It studies the origin of the universe, its history, its development, and its ultimate fate. Okay, uh, how did the universe originate? There are many theories. But uh, the Big Bang theory is the best accepted theory. Okay, now the Big Bang theory uh, uh, is based on the five astronomical findings I said. Now, what are the uh, important uh, characteristics or the features? Uh, I want you to uh, let's understand what are the uh, features of the Big Bang theory, or what are the properties of the Big Bang theory. I listed out four. The universe began to exist. Number one. Second feature is the universe continues to expand. A third one is the universe is governed by fixed laws. And last is one of the fixed laws is the law of decay. Okay, uh, the, uh, we explained this in, in depth, and then we went on to I went on to explain uh, what are what are the uh, different findings and how it impacts their theory. Uh, uh, for instance, take the Albert Einstein's new uh, law of gravity. It's known as the general theory of relativity. And then Albert Einstein uh, said, general theory of relativity means the universe is, on a, is, is expanding from a finite beginning. That means in the dim antiquity, there was a starting point when the universe did not exist and started existing. From the finite beginning, the universe started expanding. The finite beginning is known as the cosmic creation event. Okay, So Einstein, the general theory to relativity says only two things. The universe is expanding from a beginning. Okay, Now let's, what, uh, what did, what does space-time theorem says? <coughs> Hawking and Penrose presented a theorem in 1970 known as the the, the, the theorem. It's a very general theorem. No, no, the, the universe is expanding and it, it, is, it is expanding from a finite beginning. If these two conditions are correct, the condition, the, the condition then this, this space-time theorem is valid. Okay, the space-time theorem merely establishes the fact that the universe had its origin at a particular time. Space-time theorem establishes the fact that the universe originated not on its own by, by a causal agent outside uh, universe. That is, by universe, what do we mean? We mean matter, energy, space, and time. So what these authors, na, these uh, Stephen Hawking and Penrose are saying is, the universe came into existence because of a transcendent cause. Now, uh, what is this transcendent cause? They are not clear. Uh, Stephen Hawking himself says, he admits that there is a God, but he says, I don't believe that God is a personal God. Okay, and now let's look at a more powerful uh, theorem, a second theorem. This particular theorem was developed uh, 10 years after the 1970. Three astro, three theoretical physicists who were non-believers of the Bible embarked to study the, this theorem, the first theorem, and to, and to see if there is some way we can avoid uh, having a causal agent 
outside universe, bringing the universe into existence. But uh, what happened is uh, the very opposite happened. They went on to establish a more powerful theorem. This theorem says there is only one condition. Is the universe expanding? If it is expanding, if it is expanding on an average, it means uh, time itself came into existence. You see the dimension of time. We have matter, we have energy, time and space. Time and space comes into existence because of the expansion of the universe. These are the two theorems. And then we move to the last uh, uh, the technical uh, description known as what is dark energy. See, the, the universe that we live in is, on, is, is expanding from day one, from the day it began. And it is expanding at, a, at an exactitude, at a rate of the rate of expansion is, is finely tuned. Uh, what is responsible for the expansion of the universe? Dark energy. The universe is a four dimensional body where the stars, galaxies, and all the uh, are in the, in the third dimension. Okay. So when the universe, dark energy is responsible for the expansion of, is responsible for expansion. Uh, the, uh, I should clarify uh, what is a Big Bang. Big Bang merely means there was a point way back from us. Uh, it refers to the singular point of beginning. Uh, there was a sudden burst of matter, energy, space, and time. This coming of matter, energy, space, and time is known as the Big Bang. It was a well orchestrated. It was a smooth. It was, in a, it was not, uh, as you as we understand, Big Bang does not mean there was an explosion of a bomb or a dynamite that would have caused havoc. So, uh, I mean, Fred Hoyle, the British, Sir Fred Hoyle, the British astronomer, was the man who coiled the word Big Bang as a derisive term. Uh, he, he, through his findings, he came to know that the universe had a beginning outside time and space. And he didn't like that. He knew because if he accepted that, the Bible is true. So what he said was, he used a very derivative term calling the beginning as universe. But Fred Hoyle make a very, made a very interesting statement. He says, the Bible contains a good deal of cosmology. He says, uh, that's amazing. A man who was anti-Christian, who was blasting Christianity, attacking the Christian faith, admitted that na, the Bible had a good deal of cosmology in its uh, scripture. Okay, so dark energy, dark energy uh, ensures that the universe is ex expanding at an exact, uh, exact uh, rate of expansion. The expansion should not be too high from the fine the day from the finite beginning. It should not be too low from the finite beginning. If either of this happens, stars won't form or they will form and they will explode. In such an event, the, uh, the earth on which you and I live be will become inha in inhabitable. That is, human life, life itself is not possible. So the dark energy means the universe is so finely tuned to the exactitude that uh, it makes the, uh, the uh, life on earth, uh, uh, it makes life to go on. Otherwise, life will come to a standstill. Okay, uh, that's the scientific evidence. And now, uh, can we go ahead with the biblical evidence? Uh, so what does Big Bang say? Uh, Big Bang says the universe had a beginning. The universe continues to expand. The universe is governed by fixed laws. And one of the laws, the law of gravity. Okay, any questions, please, at this point? You want to ask anything about these technical terms or how the Big Bang establishes firmly that the, that the universe originated via Big Bang? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Go ahead. In the beginning, there was no matter. There was nothing. So 13.8 billion years ago, there was a sudden explosion and matter came into existence. Is it scientific? Yes. Or is it yes. stupid? Yes. Can some, something come out of nothing? 
according to science can th- something come out of nothing uh, that's a, sir, a big debate is raging in the scientific community no please listen uh, uh, because sir the only Some way the scientists can uh, take shelter is now the shelter are... they, they want to exclude god from everything so they are adopting this procedure nothing what they say something came out of nothing it is, it is scientifically again it is again science sir it is again science excuse me sir a debate is raging no no debate is not raging debate is raging only with the people who are believing in the lies people who are living believing in the lies the debate is raging there otherwise it is a very simple fact nothing cannot come out of nothing okay okay sir i'll take so the comments are taken the theory is stupid yes sir uh, sir actually sir uh, the universe came out of nothing that is un- that is correct and the bible supports it we call it the technical term is ex nihilo beginning uh, what existed before before uh, the universe no, what, I what, what say, existed matter what did I not want, exist what i want to say this big bang theory is foolish it is unscientific only those people who who believe in lies okay. they believe that okay sir. okay so this is okay. for the participant okay. to uh, uh, analyze further okay sir. okay sir. Uh, uh, just one particular comment and uh, uh, the big bang theory is well established by uh, by general theory of relativity by hubble's images space time no, and by dark energy please, they are well established please, so the only please franklin franklin i have studied the general theory of relativity i have studied the specific theory of relativity none of them say that something came out of nothing so it there was lot of mathematics both theories involved theory means i think i think theory means i think it is not even a hypothesis it is not founded on any scientific evidence sir uh, yes mr suryamurthy thank you you made a good point but that's altogether a different subject how can something come out of nothing is a different subject and no, the only base sir it is it is science i am asking you a science student can something come out of nothing as a, i am asking as a science student sir, we are not discussing at this moment we are discussing only one point uh-huh. franklin can i make a point have a beginning if, and if it I, had a, did it have a transcendent beginning if i can just come in for a moment yes sir yeah i think uh, the 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 controversy is what caused the big bang did nothing cause it or did an intelligent creator being cause it i think that is where the debate is uh, the debate is not just with the big bang the debate is what caused it if i can just give that maybe that will help solve the problem so uh, if i can add to what you say na uh, that is altogether a different subject and you know, sir the only shelter those uh, scientists scientists who believe uh, who don't accept the big bang they will want to shelter, exclude will take shelter and only on the one explanation from. quantum mechanics how many of they us have heard quantum good. mechanics can i see i have studied quantum mechanics i have studied general theory of relativity good. i have read Excellent. special theory of relativity if you know where it says that something came out of nothing you ask any science student yes sir maybe something can something can come out of nothing Yes, Mr. Suryamurthy, the point is well taken. We will explore it. Okay, but uh, uh, okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the uh, biblical evidence. Uh, that is- uh, can I uh, can I add uh, one small comment from me? Uh, please, sir, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, um, Mr. Suryamurthy was saying, can something come out of nothing? Okay. Um, scientifically, it is no no. but with god all things are possible that's what the bible says isn't it so so god then, created the bible says god created yes yeah that is what uh, is the meaning i guess god created uh, something there out of nothing right and uh, one about the big bang i heard once a preacher saying yes uh, he says that yes i believe there was a big bang uh because when god created the universe there must have been a big bang so the universe was not out of big bang but when the universe was created there must have been a big bang so don't don't okay. bring in the big bang theory then okay you, okay you accept that god created all your comments okay. are very taken 
God definitely has created, sir. When we believe the Bible, that's what we believe. They want to set aside the Bible, so they 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 try to imagine so many things. Oh, it is a scientific fact. Something cannot come out of nothing. This is a scientific fact. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let let uh, Franklin continue. Okay. Okay. Uh, all your points are well taken. Thank you. We can explore those subjects. Okay. Now let's move on to biblical evidence. So what has the Bible to say on the universe? So what we are doing today is we are looking at we are studying the biblical cosmology. By cosmology, we mean how the universe came into existence, and we are trying to understand what does the Bible say. Okay. First point: the universe began to exist. Okay. Genesis one one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here is the answer: Who brought the universe into existence? Big Bang merely says there was a transcendent cause, but they don't know what that cause is. Here, the Bible answers the question: In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Isaiah chapter forty-two and verse five captures both properties of the Big Bang: the beginning and the expansion. Uh, listen, this is what the Lord says: He who created the heavens and stretched them out. You see, this particular verse in the book of Isaiah uh, says, bring a drive zone two points. It says, who created the universe, and that the universe is on is God Himself stretches out. Okay, uh, now Hebrews chapter eleven and three. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Okay, here we have biblical evidence. Where God says that He He intervened in a and He created the universe. Okay, I hope we, there is no uh, doubt about it. Uh, let's look at the, the second uh, factor of the Big Bang. Uh, how did time come into existence? The space-time theorem says that time was created. Now, what does the Bible say? The Bible says time did not exist until God created it. Second Timothy one chapter nine. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. The grace was given to us in Christ before the beginning of time. Uh, I want you to please catch the suffixing word before the beginning of time. Titus one. Uh, I mean, I forgot to write the word, uh, but it was it says Titus one in the hope of eternal life. Which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. And uh, let's move to the third verse. Uh, it, it, First Peter one ten. He has chosen. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Okay, Christianity teaches, brethren, that time is linear. That is, uh, it had a it had a beginning and it inexorably moves forward. It inexorably moves forward. Uh, in other words, time has a past, a present, and a future. Okay. Now let's move to the another uh, factor in the Big Bang: a transcendent beginning. Cosmology says that the universe came into existence, but through a, can, a causal agent outside the universe. Or they are saying there is a transcendent, uh, there is a transcendent cause. What is the transcendent cause? They don't understand. They are not able to ex explain. Genesis one one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It is talking of a transcendent cause outside space and outside the universe, which God Himself brought the universe. Acts chapter four verse twenty four. Okay. Uh, when they heard this, they raised their voices uh, together in prayer in God, Sovereign Lord. They said, "You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and on and on, Sovereign Lord." You made the heavens and the earth. Here is a text which says that uh, that there is a transcendent cause why the universe exists. Okay. Now, uh, now let's move to the next uh, factor. Uh, science. The Big Bang says the universe is expanding. Now, uh, what I want to say is uh, uh, expanding. Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, the bible talks about the expansion of the universe but nowhere in the entire mosaic writings you genesis exodus leviticus deuteronomy and numbers nowhere do you find 
a statement that says the universe is expanding. You will not, we will not find it. That is why most Christians are not aware of the fundamental uh, uh, teaching of the Bible that the universe is expanding. But we will find evidence that the universe is expanding in the oldest book of the Bible, which is the oldest book, the book of Job. The book of Job predates mosaic writings by 500 to 600 years. Okay. And Job makes a very profound statement. He says, uh, 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 Job chapter 9, verse 8. He, he alone uh, stretches out the heavens and treads us, treads on the waves of the sea. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Uh, Job is uh, explaining to us that the universe is expanding. And uh, this is something uh, different. Not only Job, there is also other more evidence you come across. Okay, uh, let me, there are other writers also. Uh, let me read to you from the writings of Psalms, uh, chapter 104 and 2. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. Okay, the Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. Uh, this particular author, I'm not sure if that is David, but he's telling the universe is expanding. Uh, uh, by the by, uh, let me say, when Job said the universe is expanding, uh, it's the God's, God, Job says two things. God takes credit for uh, stretching out the, uh, the universe. But the word, the original Hebrew word, uh, I didn't, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Nata, the Hebrew word. It is actually, uh, it ought to be translated as expansion, expanding. Uh, the English word uh, ex stretching out is a weak translation. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let's move on to Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 5. Thus says the God of the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it. Okay. Isaiah is telling the, the universe is, was created and it is expanding. Okay. And then you still have more. Uh, you, have, you have verses from Jeremiah. You have verses from Je from Zechariah, but I will stop here. Or maybe I will just say one, let me add one more thing. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 51, 15. He has made the earth by his power and has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Did you, please listen. And he has stretched out the heavens by his understanding. We are talking whether the universe is expanding and we, are, we have solid evidence that the Bible teaches the universe is expanding. Uh, the, now, the beauty here is uh, scientists did not know till 1999 until dark energy, uh, dark energy was uh, uh, discovered. When was dark energy discovered? In 1999. It was only during 1999 that scientists came to know that the uh, universe is, on a, is expanding. Brethren, can you and I believe it? The scriptures which were written hundreds and thousands way back speak, not, is the first to speak about the expansion of the universe and first to teach about the expansion of the universe. So uh, Dr. Ross makes a beautiful statement. Uh, I like the way he puts it. He says, for 2,600 long years, the only, uh, only scientific evidence, the only philosophical evidence, the only historical evidence, the only record available for the expansion of the universe is found in the pages of the Bible. What, what a mind-blowing uh, discovery. Brethren, what a great, this, many Christians are not aware of it. And we need to be aware of it. That, the, that the, when, the science, when the scientists say that the universe is expanding, <coughs> They are merely confirming what was written 2,600 years ago. How could the, uh, how could the uh, Bible authors write? I'm convinced, and I hope you all agree with me, and nobody could understand it visually. Even the, the, the patriarchs who recorded it did not understand it. They were writing it under inspiration. Here we have evidence that the Bible is the Inspired word of God. That is why you know, uh, the, we, we say that it is characterized by inerrancy. That is why we say the Bible is the infallible word of God. Okay. 
Uh, I think I have made everything clear. And then uh, let's move on to the next factor <coughs> in cosmology. The universe, the Big Bang says, the universe is governed by fixed laws. That is also correct. Uh, God told the, the Jews in Jeremiah, you change, uh, I don't change. Uh, I am changeless, I am immutable. As evidence that I don't change, look at the laws of nature. The laws of nature don't change. And similarly, I don't change, but you keep changing. Okay? Uh, this particular verse is found in Jeremiah. The whole chapter you can read, Jeremiah 33. Uh, 33 but I'll read 25 and 26. This is what the Lord says. <coughs> if I have not made covenant with the day and night and established the laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject them. Brethren, the underlying point is the Bible confirms the universe is governed by fixed laws, constant laws. They don't change, including the law of decay. Now let's move to the law of decay. Uh, one of the components of the Big Bang. Uh, the effects of the big of the law of decay is all pervasive. I mean, you can look at your cars, you can look at your uh, houses, we can look at our own bodies, uh, you can see around. Uh, the, you see, the law of decay is in operation, and that is why now there is a deterioration. Okay, uh, Romans chapter eight and eight, eighteen to twenty-one. Uh, see what the Bible has to say on the law of decay. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject, subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of one who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. Let's underscore that phrase that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage of decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. Brethren, the apostle Paul is saying the law of uh, the decay is in operation and that is why everywhere you find decay. But the good news for Christians, for you and for me is the time is coming, not soon, when the fullness of kingdom will be established and this uh, God is going to eliminate the law of decay, the law of gravity, the law of electromagnetism, the second law of thermodynamics, so that uh, we will not have to suffer the, uh, the, the ravages of decay. Okay? And that's all. Uh, that's, a, that's what I had about, uh, 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 about the biblical evidence. And uh, if I can have your permission, now let's make a comparative study. Okay? We want to compare the, the Big Bang cosmology and the biblical cosmology. Why are we doing this? We are integrating uh, the findings of science and the findings of the Bible. Why are we doing it? Because God gave you and me two books. He gave us the book of nature. The book of nature is what you study all around you. And then the book of, then he gave us the book of scripture. The book of nature is a general revelation. It does not give its full specifics or details. Then we, uh, in order to graduate, we move from the studying the book of gender, uh, the, the book of nature, we will graduate to the book of special revelation, the Bible. Okay, let's do a little bit of comparative, just a brief uh, uh, comparative study. Okay, the universe, the Big Bang cosmology, and uh, the, the Big Bang says the universe came into existence. Okay, matter, energy, space, and time. And even the Bible says that both are there is perfect harmony, there is concordance. Okay, time, how did time say? Big Bang says time originated. Uh, time was time came into existence and uh, the bible concurs with that okay and then cause what caused the universe to come into into existence according to uh, big bang a transcendent cause uh, was in uh, brought the universe into existence uh, what does the bible say it says it's a transcendent cause as shanti ma'am said now god created the universe okay and the nature of the universe uh, the big bang says the universe is expanding and uh, uh, the Bible is the first to say the, the, the universe is expanding and uh, uh, they are the ones who, it is not, uh, Al it's not Edwin, uh, it, it's not Einstein, it is not uh, Hubble who came in the 20th century and started telling us, one minute, seven glass of water.
Okay. So the nature of the universe, universe is expanding. Uh, Big Bang says God is uh, stretching out or expanding the universe. Okay. And one last point is the fate of the universe, uh, which we are not considering today, but we'll make a general comment. Uh, if you, those of people, those people uh, who say the universe is eternal and uh, it is going on and on, it, it is uh, there no beginning, they are heading towards doom. You see, the Big Bang says the, the ultimately the universe is going to collapse or the universe will burn out. And what does the, the Bible say? The Bible says the same thing. In the book of Revelation, we read, uh, God promises you and me a yeah. new heavens and a new earth. A new heavens and a new earth. This present physical dispensation is going to come to an end, and God is going to uh, into, God is going to bring uh, the new heavens and a new earth where Christ will reign. That's the good news, brethren. Okay, and then one last. Uh, uh, that's about I had, and then one last uh, concluding paragraph. I don't know how much time we have. Uh, just me, let me make quick. So, do we have time? How much time do you need, Franklin? Uh, just five minutes. Yeah, five minutes is okay. okay. Okay, okay. Let's wrap up our study. Okay. And then uh, here, now we are going to consider the big question of life. What are the implications of the Big Bang Theory? Or what are the implications of the new discoveries of the law? Or uh, uh, how the, what lessons can you learn, if you want to put it simply? Okay. The first implication of the Big Bang Theory is the Big Bang Theory is a well-established fact, scientific fact, and the Bible concurs. The first, uh, uh, the first uh, implication is the uh, science has uncovered the greatest miracle of all miracles. Uh, let me quote to you from one particular uh, I, uh, man, Eric Metaxas. He says, the greatest miracle of all time is the miracle of the universe. One that inescapably points out to something or someone beyond itself. Brethren, science, Big Bang, or the science has uncovered the greatest miracle, the coming of the universe into existence. Now, this has got serious ramifications. It, uh, it, this means it is possible if, if the if science has discovered the greatest miracle, it is possible many more miracles must have occurred in the past. It is also possible that many more miracles can occur henceforth. So uh, the point is, science must be open. Uh, when they, whenever scientists uh, do their research and investigations, they must be open to the fundamental fact that miracle that the uh, evidence can be natural evidence or it can be supernatural evidence. Science must accept that miracles are are a fact of life. Okay. A second point implication is. <coughs> I mean, uh, this is well established even by theoretical non-believing scientists. Uh, one scientist says, arranging the universe as we think it is arranged is uh, said the team of three non-believers would be the would be require nothing but a miracle. Uh, and then the, the team goes on to say, um, an unknown agent, one beyond space, time, time, intervened in the evolution of the universe for reasons of its own. Here are theoretical physicists. Here are uh, non-believers in the Bible who are admitting that miracles have occurred. The greatest miracle is the coming of the universe. Okay. Uh, what did I say? Uh, uh, can you prove scientifically that God exists? Uh, a word of caution. See, we have to be careful when we say prove. The word prove cannot be used so loosely. Uh, prove is, is used only whether there is uh, exactitude of rigorous exactitude. It's only used in mathematics. So the question should be, when I ask you, can you prove the existence of God? The question is technically incorrect. You must say, is there evidence uh, or is there, are there pointers uh, to show that God exists? And uh, I think uh, it was Praveen who said, <laughs> I, I, immediately I caught his attention. Uh, he said, my wife loves me, but I cannot prove to you mathematically that she loves me, but I have enough evidence. I have enough, and then I think Praveen told that and then, uh, so let's answer the question. <coughs> is there evidence that <coughs> God exists? Space-time theorems. Space-time theorem says there's a transcendent cause. Who's the transcendent cause? They don't. We want to answer it that it is God who, 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 who says that I create the universe. Space-time theorems 
are uh, as proof that there is a God uh, beyond the universe. And then, uh, is this God a personal God? Uh, most uh, atheists uh, rebut uh, the Big Bang saying, no, 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 no. Uh, it may be some uh, automatic, some other God, but it's not a personal God. How do you counter that? Take dark energy. You see, dark energy has to be tuned to the exactitude. Otherwise, now the universe will become, the planet Earth will become in it. Uh, it will not be permit the, the flourishing of life. So the dark energy proves that the one who designed the universe, the one who fine tuned the universe, is whose his intelligence, his inventiveness, his knowledge, his power is far beyond what humans have. Now take the best example of fine tuning. I mean, last time we had a clip. And then Dr. Ross gives about uh, that, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yes. Uh, 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 a telescope in, in a, a machine that is fine tuned to the power 10 to the power of 97 times. I mean, uh, that is nothing, but uh, uh, dark energy has to be tuned uh, to the 10 to the power of 122, 10 followed by 122 zeros. You may check this data on the YouTube. Okay. So, uh, what? Science is saying is that the God, <coughs> dark energy establishes the fact that there is a personal God. And uh, another important thesis is, uh, is its impact on theology. You see, the general theory of relativity had profound impact, profound theological implications and worldwide implications. And because of that, no, the general theory of relativity was subjected to rigorous and exhaustive testing under different contexts. Today, general theory of relativity is the best proven or the well-proven uh, principle in all of physics. Okay, now what is general, what is the, uh, what is the lesson that we can learn? What is its impact on theology? You see, when you compare biblical uh, Big Bang cosmology and the, and the biblical cosmology, you find that there is harmony, there is concordance, there is, there is no concurrence. In other words, what the big what's big bang or the science is doing is they are confirming the veracity of the bible they are saying the bible is 100 percent accurate and that's that's great that's fantastic we have scientific evidence establishing the fact that the bible is 100 percent accurate scientific scientifically okay now uh, uh, i must say when the bible is at the when the Biblical theology or the biblical worldview is accurate. It means every other worldview is, is wrong. Uh, by because now, uh, by definition, truth is exclusive. Okay, if the if the Bible is true, it excludes everybody else. And now let, now let me give you an example. Uh, one of the worldviews says one Eastern worldview says uh, they believe in the uh, reincarnation theory and they call it the reincarnation of the universe or oscillating theory. It says at 4.38 billions, the universe recycles itself, but that is wrong. For the past 13.8 billion years, the universe is running and still running, okay? And then another Middle Eastern uh, world, uh, religious uh, worldview says, uh, it gives three explanations and all three contradict each other. And one of the uh, explanations stay, says, the, the planets are uh, closer to us. Uh, <laughs> it is, the stars are closer to us. We can see it even in the naked eye. So uh, what we understand, uh, what are the implications on theology and worldview? Atheism, materialism, naturalism, and every other worldview goes for a toss. Uh, if I can borrow a pastor's uh, 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 perfected terminology, uh, atheism, materialism, naturalism, and every other uh, every other worldviews, all are clean bold uh, with a googly middle stump off. I mean, uh, you must pardon me if I'm trying to be harsh, or uh, but this is a fundamental fact. You can check for yourself. Go to uh, study any worldview, and uh, you will find that they all uh, collapse like a crumble of cards. The by the biblical worldview or the Christian worldview is the only worldview that soars to dazzling and spectacular heights. No other worldview uh, comes even close to it. Uh, thank you all for uh, listening to me. And now uh, may I open the floor for any questions or comments.
well done mr poppins yes, sir well done well done thank you very much sir <laughs> sir I, i am not a scientist or i am not a theologian but i no. have been studying for the past 6 months i bring independent research like our pastor yes. <laughs> thank you god bless <laughs> but did it make sense sir a uh, lot of sense thank you okay so what we are trying to do is uh, normally if you ask people na uh, uh, is the bible true they will say yes but what sort of evidence will they will they will they furnish they will furnish historical evidence they will furnish archaeological evidence they will furnish evidence from prophecy how the prophecy comes on schedule and then they will furnish evi- evidence of answered prayer or miracles happening today we are presenting to you scientific evidence astronomical evidence to show that the bible biblical world view is 100% accurate and reliable it was inspired that is why the bible is uh, we call it the infallible word of god the inerrant word of god it has no errors or mistakes thank you buddy thank you mr poppins great effort put in thank you god uncle and uh, mrs um, uh, sanjeev mr uncle sanjeev ram uncle can you hear me uh, uh, very very able to understand mm. yes comes up uh, six months back <laughs> i too was uh, i too was in my infancy like you i did not know anything <laughs> excellent yeah any comments or questions uh, um perhaps a couple of thoughts i would like to bring to your notice perhaps uh, uh, since uh, i believe you're going to take another session on this so am i right uh, mr franklin uh in that case kindly consider uh, these thoughts uh, number one thing is from whatever you have presented uh, today uh, and uh, last week scientifically you have explained uh, uh, mainly couple of uh, two points in cosmology number one it is uh, number one it is it, the universe has a beginning and uh, you ex- you explain this is through big bang Uh, i'm not saying by big bang or through uh, like say through big bang big bang as joshua also mentioned and second thing is the universe is expanding and it is uh, <clears throat> on its way to um, you know collapse these are the two two points uh, you have mentioned very loudly and another thing was uh, uh, god created the universe and has set a uh, certain fixed na- laws of nature through which the universe runs this is a cosmology not just the bible actually even in the uh, early western um, philosophies they have this uh, we, we they are called uh, many gnostics have this same uh, same cosmology as well as uh, you might have heard about this group called uh, deism deistic people they too hold a similar uh, cosmology Uh, so i i'm more focused towards uh, personally i'm talking about focus towards christocentric or god centric trinitarian perspectives we like to look at uh, if this cosmology is uh, held by both um, judeo christian uh, world view as well as western deistic world view how it, uh, uh, how can we make it more relative to christians where we bring christ into it you know how it uh, affects our uh, christian understanding christian spiritual life and uh, the- theological understanding of god so if you could uh, help us with that direction that would be uh, i mean especially connected it would be more uh, enriching to me personally uh, second thing is uh, i asked previously also how where does the center of uh, center of gravity works in this <laughs> you know you said uh, you expand you said expand from where from the finite points one second sir. what is that finite expanding word? from the finite point a finite yeah. point is a starting point the origin of the universe uh, so from there now the expansion rate should be same yes yeah. sir, please go ahead sorry for interrupting you 
So if you could uh, relate the center of gravity, especially into it uh, would be uh, very helpful for me personally, I'm talking about uh, if you could find some connections to it. Thank you, Praveen. Okay. Well taken. Your points are well taken. I, I also appreciate the title you have chosen. I was just wondering between two uh -huh. words, confirm and as well as approve. Yeah. Uh, does science approve uh, biblical cosmology or the science confirm biblical uh, cosmology? Okay. So the word but, but confirm we have used. In case we are, we are planning to present this to the to the secular audience, we have to be careful that we don't hurt their feelings. No? We don't want to be harsh. Uh, we don't want to be, uh, but now we, uh, we can tone down the uh, maybe strong words or language. <laughs> I know, I appreciate the, the word <laughs> chosen. But the science confirms biblical cosmology rather than science approves biblical cosmology. <laughs> That's the perspective mostly Christian theologians and all try to take to find some kind of approval from science. See here, it's science is saying so it is approving what biblical Bible said. And I appreciate your terminology. We have run out of time, but uh, if anyone would like to. Bring in some uh, pearls of wisdom. You're welcome. Right. Otherwise, uh, maybe then I can. I just wanted to make uh, uh, very general comments, and and then maybe we can end with that. Uh, one is Franklin. You mentioned truth is exclusive, and. Uh, Hence, the biblical truth or biblical worldview is true. And you also said all other worldviews are hence untrue. If I can just uh, probably amend that to say that all worldviews have elements of truth. Uh, I don't think it would be factually right to say all worldviews are wrong or false. They have elements of truth, and so they may not have the sum total of truth. Am I uh, making sense, uh, Franklin, or do you want me to? Sir, if, I can, uh, if you can make a few comments. Jesus was very emphatic, said it. He says, I am the truth, the way and the life. When, when Jesus said, I am the truth, the ultimate truth is not a set of principles, it's not a set of laws, but it is not a set of rituals. It is a person. And Jesus is making that emphatic statement. When Jesus made that emphatic statement, he is including, he is excluding anyone and everyone on the opposite side. With Jesus, that is correct. But with, with uh, facts or principles or values, uh, they may not apply. For example, many worldviews endorse the value of prayer. Can you say that's untrue? So uh, what we have to do, we have to be careful when we make sweeping statements. <laughs> One more thought, if I can just leave you with. We must always understand that the Bible was never intended to be a science textbook. Uh, we, can, we, can we can definitely recognize that scientific discovery is compatible with the Bible. But we cannot read the Bible as a scientific textbook. And so we must be careful about saying that Bible has, uh, you know, we can learn cosmology from the Bible. Uh, we have to be, I, I'm just making a very general statement there, but uh, we have to be careful how we read the Bible. <laughs> okay. Having said that, uh, uh, let me request uh, Pastor Sachin to lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you, Sachin. We are also having uh, worship practice at our place. So I have to put that on mute. Please join with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, thank you for bringing your word uh, through Mr. Poppins. With the help of the spirit oh lord and thank you for opening our heart oh lord to understand uh, and correlate oh lord god 
and build up uh, uh, knowledge. What a, a pleasure, Lord, it is that we can always refer to your word and then compare everything around it, O Lord God. And how beautifully your Holy Spirit helps us, O Lord God, to understand. And um, what a fellowship we have, O Lord. So I want to thank you for this evening, especially, Lord, we want to thank you for uh, Mr. Franklin for bringing uh, and leading this session for us, O Lord, and for everyone who could join, O Lord God. Our Father, we continue to pray that uh, now the, the session is not uh, ending here, and neither is stopping here, but it will continue, O Lord, as your Spirit will lead us to further understand, O Lord God. And and, and the, the small doubts which, it, which we didn't put here, O Lord God, we continue to, to, to explore, O Lord. So I want to thank you, Lord, for everyone who could be here, gather for the study, Lord. Uh, and we submit um, ourselves into your hand, Lord. Thank you for this time. Amen. Okay. Um, I think we lost, yeah. We lost you for uh, a moment, Sachin. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. That's that's okay, but we we all said amen. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted uh, just before we close, I just wanted to make one comment uh, that uh, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is sovereign and supreme. Even Paul, who had all the knowledge and who was taught at the feet of Gamaliel and all those things, he said, "I consider all of those things as you know." Uh, you know, all, he used the word dung also. I'm sorry to say, but the Bible says, compared to the knowledge of my of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, Mr. Zachariah, if you talk about uh, you know uh, what uh, what uh, uh, Mr. F uh, what uh, Mr. Franklin Poppins was mentioning, he was giving he was trying to get, uh, draw attention to the one supreme sovereign Lord God and Jesus Christ. All the other world views having elements of truth and all. I've heard people saying, you know, about other faiths and beliefs. We all are worshipping that God. We all are, you know, we all are this thing, what you call, uh, you know, uh, knowing God. And, uh, you know, we have, a, you know, we all religions teach about, you know, God. And we, there are many ways to God and all that. It doesn't stand water and uh, it doesn't hold any water in the truth of the Bible, in the light of God's word and what's true. That's why he says it's inherent and infallible. We should not forget the greatness of our God. You're absolutely right. But I did not say what uh, you're, uh, you're intending, you're, you thought I said. Uh, there is no ex uh, there is no substitute to Jesus Christ. He is the exclusive truth. But, but you didn't uh, mention. But you have to.